The difference between large-scale software that is written for big companies and the software written for your own personal projects that are going to make zero dollars is a lot different than you might think. Firstly, a large company is dealing with tens if not hundreds of employees writing in the same code base, but they're also dealing with customer information like data that they need to keep secure, and in many cases millions of dollars that come from the software itself. And for those reasons, companies tend to follow very strict guidelines when it comes to writing code. And so what you're going to learn today and what I'm going to show you is what company software looks like from an employee with the code base. And this is actually the code base, so uh, I hope my employer doesn't find this. I'm kidding. I will be showing you the actual code base, but the company is open source, so I'm allowed to do this, I hope. But anyways, let's get into the main differences. And real quick, this is my dog. She's been bothering me, so uh, say hi, Gigi. Yeah, she says hi. And so the first main difference between personal software and company software is that company software tends to focus on reusable, maintainable, safe, and uh, scalable code. For example, when naming variables in our personal projects, we can just fuck off and say, hey, I wanna name this variable people when it has nothing to do with people. But again, we're dealing with thousands, if not millions of users, and we're dealing with hundreds of programmers. So even the most basic variable has to be named accordingly. And so for example, for the most of this video, we're gonna stay in the sign up page just because we're going through a bunch of examples and as you can see we have a sign up schema and accordingly this is a sign up schema you didn't see me just name the schema where it's not that obvious we named it sign up schema because well it's a sign up schema and i know you're probably thinking like no shit but trust me um naming goes a long way especially with a bunch of people and another thing that companies do in terms of like reusable and maintainable code is having pretty good error handling i can't lie in my personal projects when it comes to like something like authentication i'm just gonna write a simple if else statement and check for something super basic for auth and leave it at that. Well, when it comes to something like a big piece of software, as you can see, we're dealing with a lot of if else statements and checking through everything to make sure that it's in tip top shape. For example, if there's no platform user, we're returning something. If there's no callback search params URL, we're calling something, otherwise we're calling something else. And I know that the whole point of this is to minimize the need of testing. I'm no expert, but I'd rather catch the error when just writing the code and checking it in my own terminal versus actually writing the tests. Another big part about scalable code is having reusable code to save time. And a good example of that would be adding different props within our signup function to give it different use cases. For example, we might need to use the signup page in different areas of the app and the different parameters can be applied to many different sections. And having these props may allow us to use it in different parts of our app. And all right, so we've talked enough about the maintainability and writing maintainable and reusable code. I feel like that's the most important part but what about the process of writing code? In personal projects, it's quite common to just write code in our own you know, code editor and then post it straight into production, into Vercel or something like that, and pray to God that it works. But again, we're dealing with a bunch of different factors and we cannot just do that. And when it comes to writing code, uh, as an employee, what I have to do is firstly make a branch of the GitHub repository, write the code that I need to write. And when I'm done, after testing it into my local computer and trying everything out, I make a pull request for someone higher up, like a manager, to check out my branch. And if everything goes well, they make the merge with the main branch. But if not, they tell me what I need to change. I make those changes and I try again. So you notice there's a much different process. Whereas in our own code, we just go from coding to posting. And obviously these code reviews are necessary because we're dealing with a bigger repository and much more code. Now, okay, so we've talked about the processes and what code could actually look like. But another quite common thing when it comes to writing code for companies is having mono repos. And so in our regular applications that we're probably writing, we have one main repository on GitHub. For example, for my code platform, it's called platform and that's the main GitHub repositories. But we're dealing with a lot of code and what tends to happen is that companies break different sections down within an app into different repositories. That being we have a repository within a repository. And so for example, in the main application, we might have the main repository, but within that we might have repositories for a documentation we're writing for the company, a specific part of the app, like the landing page. And this is done just to break things down and to make things a lot more manageable. And especially if you're dealing with different parts of a company, like the marketing team, the sales team, having these different parts dedicated to those specific aspects of the company makes it so much easier to manage. And so the final difference between big company software and personal software is uh, having some sort of CMS. I don't know if every big company has this, but I do know a lot that do. And all a CMS is, is a way to manage content. It is called content management system for a reason. And the main use cases of a content management system is if you're repeating a page over and over again, like let's say you have a sign up page, a login page, a forgot password page, they all tend to look the same 
same and have the same parameters. And so what we could do instead is have a CMS that is connected to our code. We create one instance of the code itself, maybe calling it auth. And then in the CMS without code, we can create a model of what the page is. So we'd have like an email input and password input, and then that would apply to the code base once we connect it. And the whole point of it is just to make it easier to build reusable pages, especially with SEO when we want to have a bunch of pages. Uh, this just makes it so much faster because with just a click of the button, we can add a new page and update it right away with just one page of code. And yeah, so that's like the key takeaways of the differences. You can basically think of company software as a way to manage different employees. If we're all allowed to just write code in a singular branch, post it to production without any reviews, we'll obviously run into a lot of problems. And what company software and what we talked about allows us to do is have certain guidelines to make sure nothing goes wrong or at least minimize what goes wrong. And if you reach the end, leave two kiss emojis in the comment section. All right. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.